Okay, hi there. Welcome to our video looking at positive externalities from production. So what are they? Well, with any positive externality, what we're thinking about here is a third party benefit, a spillover benefit affecting a bystander arising from the production decisions, the output supply decisions of agents in the market. Now, positive production externalities occur in many situations. Uh, here's a couple of examples. One is uh, that a business might develop uh, or an organization might develop some open source software, which is then made freely available to others to use and adapt for their own benefit. Uh, the Linux operating system is a good example of this and, and uh, Firefox and uh, lots of other open source development projects. And essentially, that brings down the development costs for other businesses. It has a wider social benefit, particularly when we develop industry standards. Um, these, this, this software can be widely shared and, and uh, amended and can be implemented and generate widespread benefits to other people. Another good example of a positive spillover effect from production would be things like university research and development. Uh, which can fast forward, for example, the development of vaccines and other uh, medical uh, procedures and treatments which can bring down the risk of serious illness and death. So oftentimes firms try, try to prevent their innovations and their inventions, but actually if it's open source and widely dispersed, there's a wider social benefit which brings down the cost for other firms. So because there are positive externalities in production, the marginal social cost of supply will be less than the marginal private cost. One person's production, research, development and things brings down costs for other agents in society. So that therefore with a positive production externality, the marginal social cost is lower than the marginal private cost. Another really good example of this is things like building better infrastructure, building new roads, bypasses, improved traffic systems and things. There's a cost to the government or the local authority involved, for sure, but it actually brings down the cost of other agents, for example, by addressing transport congestion issues, by improving the, the flow of goods and services and bringing down logistics costs. This is what we mean by positive production externalities. Now, the so because of this, the socially optimum level of output will be higher than the free market equilibrium. If we only think about private costs and benefits, we end up at Q1. But if we think about the external cost benefits to other people, which brings down social cost, we want to be at Q2. So positive production externalities shifts the supply curve to the right. And the market failure occurs because there's underproduction when there are positive production externalities. The market equilibrium is Q1, the social optimum is Q2. And how do we show the social welfare loss arising from this underproduction? Well, let's label some areas here, A, B and C. The social welfare loss is shown by the area A, B, C. If we stick at Q1, instead of going to Q2, we're missing a gap where the, the benefit is greater than the social cost. And therefore, if we remain at Q1, instead of going to Q2, then there is a net loss of social welfare. OK, in the next video, I'll take you through a little selection of multiple choice questions which test your understanding of positive externalities.